Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi, you guys. My name is Dr. Amy. It is so nice to be here tonight. Thank you for joining me on tonight's show. I just came from work and I think about topics for the show all the time. And I thought for tonight's show, I want to go through my IVF checklist. This is a checklist I give to my patients. And so no matter where you are, I want you to have this list because I feel like if you have this list, you're not going to wonder what you could have done differently before your cycle started to be better prepared. So get out a pen and paper, tune in, you can print out the blog notes that I'm going to write up after this show and take them to your doctor's office or just have them in your binder. Here we go. So the first thing that I ask patients to do is have a pen, paper, and a three-ring binder. I know that sounds super, super silly because everyone's walking around with their cell phones now adding notes. Certainly you can do it all on your phone. But, you know, us doctors, we're not as technologically savvy as patients sometimes want us to be. So we print out calendars, we hand them to patients. And so when I print out a calendar to a patient, I put it in a folder and hand it to them. But if you don't have a, a, a practice that's gonna do that, having your own folder is gonna be really helpful. Have some dividers in there. You can put your um, medical records, your labs, for example, your medication calendar, and include a section, for example, for receipts so you can keep everything in one place, stay organized, have the pharmacy phone number right there. So if you need refills on your medication, you're never gonna run out. And one other tip is I tell my patients to stay at least two days ahead of meds so you never feel like you have a medication emergency, especially when it comes to those really, really important drugs like progesterone after transfer. This is something else that I go through with my patients. I saw this on Twitter and I thought that this was an amazing, amazing tool for patients. So I wanna teach it to you right now. What does my IVF pyramid look like? So often we talk about things in IVF like losing things. For example, you start off with a certain number of eggs in the beginning of the cycle. That's called the antral follicle count. And as the cycle progresses, sometimes not all those eggs grow. In the end, you might gain, for example, two healthy embryos from 10 follicles. And so it is a natural and normal human response to feel like something is lost and that something was taken away from you. <clears throat> but instead, I want you to think of things as things that you've gained. For example, if you started with 10 eggs, you've now gained two embryos in the end. So it took 10 follicles to get the two eggs, you know, basically from that cycle. So I'm going to show you what the pyramid looks like. Let's just start with a simple number of 10. So let's say you have an antral follicle count of 10. Let me just make sure that's not my answering service. Nope. I'm all good. There's no sperm emergency. I mean, progesterone emergency going on here. So we got 10 follicles. Out of the 10 follicles, let's say we have nine eggs retrieved, okay? Out of the nine eggs retrieved, let's say eight are mature, and I'm not gonna be so obvious to keep going down by one number, so watch this. So let's say out of the eight eggs that were mature, six were fertilized, okay? You can see the number six there. Producer John, can you see the number six? Yes, okay, thank you so much. Of the six that are mature, let's just say you have three blastocysts, okay? So we got three blastocysts right there. And then out of those three, two are normal, and now we go and have our one baby, okay? So that's basically what I call the IVF pyramid. And that pyramid, the numbers will change based on your age, your follicle count, your AMH, and what your doctor knows about you. And it's important, I think, to know these numbers up front because like I said, 100% in everything else in what we do in our lives means you have 10 eggs, you're gonna get 10 healthy embryos but it just does not work that way when it comes to human reproduction. 10 eggs can mean one healthy embryo. It certainly can mean nine healthy embryos, but you need to have the right set of expectations going into it. Because if you expected 10 embryos and your doctor's like, oh my God, I'm so happy you have two healthy embryos, you're gonna be like, I'm sorry, what am I missing here? Why are you so happy? I'm really pissed. So I like people to feel like they are informed. So ask your doctor. They may not know the terminology of IVF pyramid, but ask a simple question. How many healthy embryos do you expect from the number of follicles that I have at the beginning of the cycle given my age, my AMH level, my FSH level? What do you think? I know that was a really long sentence and I went really, really fast, but you can simply ask, how many healthy embryos do you think I'm gonna get from this cycle? And then you can also say, and make sure that they're taking into account all those things that I just mentioned. So now, 
These are questions to ask yourself. What is my diagnosis? You've heard me talk about the Tushy Method. It is now trademarked, people. You can go to TushyMethod.com to hear more about it. Applause, applause. So as far as why am I doing this, what is your diagnosis? What can I do that it's in my power to give myself the highest chance for pregnancy? Ask yourself that question. Have an answer. And if you don't know the answer, don't accept the answer of unexplained. So many patients, for example, 41 year old patient came in the other day and said she was given the diagnosis of unexplained. And I'm like, whoa, 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 you just told me the explanation when you just told me how old you are. You're 41. That is the explanation. And it's so unfair that we just don't tell patients the truth of really how it is. We don't need to sugarcoat things, especially sperm quality. If the quality is low, let's just talk about it and see what we can do to th make things even better and do all the diagnostic tests that we need to do beforehand and take supplements and do all those things and have a, have a healthy lifestyle. Don't sugarcoat it and think that IVF is just gonna fix everything because it really doesn't. If there's bad sperm, sometimes that means bad embryos. So think about tests like DNA fragmentation testing and other things that your doctor may recommend like rule out a varicocele, see a male fertility specialist. Those are such important things to do up front as part of your checklist. Next question to ask yourself along the lines of the IVF pyramid are what are my chances? How many cycles will it take? If this doesn't work, what are my other options? I can tell you asking these questions and getting answers before you start your cycle just feels better. It just feels good just knowing the answers and knowing what the numbers mean so that if something doesn't work, you know that there's gonna be another plan for you, there's gonna be another way, there's gonna be another protocol, and just asking those questions just gets you better informed about what you're going through right now. I don't expect you to be an IVF expert listening to this show, but I do hope that going through this checklist will help you feel so much more informed going through your own IVF cycle, no matter where you are. Whether you're my patient or someone else's patient, they're gonna be like, wow, you have done your homework. So do your homework with your three ring binder. <laughs> And your dividers. So here are the questions to ask your doctor. Um, you know, it, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask, you know, what protocol are we using and why? What medications are we using and why? And what are the side effects that I can expect? Because if you didn't know that, for example, you were going to, you know, feel bloated, uh, then that might feel very upsetting and you might feel like there might be some sort of complication and something's going wrong. So ask your doctor, these are the things I tell my patients, for example, at the beginning of the cycle, you might feel a little nauseous, you might have some nipple tenderness, you might feel some twinges in your ovaries as the cycle progresses, you might see some egg white cervical mucus, and that's totally normal to see, it's your body's natural response to a rising estrogen level. You might feel super bloated, someone told me today she felt like a whale or an elephant walking around. So if, if that's a symptom that's going to make you feel like this is not something for you, you're going to have to ask yourself, is it worth it for you to go through this? Because I promise you, it is not easy to be an IVF patient, but if you go into it with the right set of expectations, you're going to be like, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. I was well prepared and I can totally handle it. So here are some of my other t tips. Questions to ask your doctor. When should I stop exercising and stop having sex? So I tell people you don't have to abstain during sex. I mean, you're on all these hormones. You might feel really sexual. That seems really, really mean not to have sex. So if you're not, fe if you're feeling in the mood but still are feeling bloated, try outer course. Google it if you don't know what outer course is. As far as exercising goes, uh, listen to your body. Don't be that person that's like, I just ran three miles, Amy, and I'm so crampy. Should I run another two? No, you just listen to your body. You know, I tell my patients for the first three or four days of meds, it is okay to be active, but after that, slow it down. Do some walking, do some strolling, do yoga, do Pilates. And certainly after the transfer, you don't want your body to think that you're running from a wild bear. No, you want your body to think that it's going to allow an embryo to implant. So that's certainly not the time to continue with your high impact, high intensity exercises and heavy lifting. So take it easy, but talk to your doctor because your doctor is going to have their own specific recommendations for you because they know you the best. I don't know you. I'm just here on YouTube. Hi, but I certainly want to help you. The other question to ask is what foods should I eat? And again, this is individualized. For example, I told a patient the other day, um, you know, I recommend this sort of diet for you. And I said, what do you think about that? And she said, well, these kind of foods kind of irritate my stomach. I'm like, well, let's not do that. So don't force yourself to do something if you don't think that it's going to be good for you. You've heard things like the Mediterranean diet. I also talk about the pro-fertility diet. So that basically is a low pesticide produce, protein in the form of fish, whole grains, and dairy. So those are the things that you can eat. And 
chances are many of you already do that. Many of you already follow the Mediterranean diet as well. We, uh, I'm here in California. We have access to you know, amazing for fresh fruits and vegetables. So um, those are the kinds of things that you want to focus on. And the other thing is what supplements should I take? I believe that supplements help. I ask my patients to at least take a good prenatal fish oil, vitamin D, and CoQ10. But I also individualize that supplement list. There are other patients that I ask to take other things, like for example, acai berry, maybe melatonin, maybe DHEA. But certainly there's no one size fit all approach to supplements. So talk to your doctor about what they recommend for you because they know your body better than I do. So here, more recommendations. I mean, you would think that I would get tired telling my patients this, and I don't because again, I work so hard going through cycles for my patients with my patients. I do all my own ultrasounds, I do all my own procedures. So when something doesn't work, it feels like my loss as well. So I work so hard to help patients because I want them to be wildly successful. So that's why I've put together this list. So here we go. I talked a little bit about my other recommendations, for example, the prenatal already, so I'll skip that. Having a therapist on your team, as well as an acupuncturist, can really help. They're like other uh, cheerleaders on your cheerleading squad. I guess that's another way of thinking about it. But for example, acupuncture can certainly help, I think, with the symptoms as you're going through the cycle. And therapy, I mean, dealing with all the stress and anxiety, the relationships, your mother, your mother-in-law, I mean, all the questions they're asking, it is so nice to troubleshoot these sometimes um, uh, sensitive topics that are brought up at work, around friends, with someone who understands the process and has helped other fertility patients just like you. And they're going to equip you with all sorts of uh, techniques. Um, for example, like, you know, the simplest one is like find your happy place. I mean, how hard is that to do? But there are so many other wonderful techniques that you can do, use to decrease stress, decrease anxiety when you're feeling anxious. So another thing, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a buzzy bee, but when I have patients who are extremely needle phobic, needle phobic, there are two things that I do for them. One thing, they come to my office literally every single day and I give them the shot. I also mix their medications for them. But if you don't want to do that, that's okay. We, I also show my patients this thing called the buzzy bee. It's super cute. It actually vibrates and there's a little uh, ice area underneath the little bee and you turn on the vibration and then you do the shot and you barely feel it because the skin is numb. So that's something to consider. Buzzy bee, you can find it online. The other thing is something called a pain cake. It's a little uh, sticky ice pack and you just put it on your skin before you do the shot and take it off and then you do the shot and also it helps uh, numb the area so you don't feel the shot as much. As you're going through the process, you're going to feel crampy, especially after the egg retrieval. So a heating pad is a super easy way of getting comfortable. And even when you have a period at the start of the IVF cycle, using that heating pad, Tylenol, Motrin, all those things can help. And as your ovaries get swollen, guess what happens? Sometimes your bowels slow down. As a reaction to the anesthesia medication, same thing. You might experience some constipation. So we don't want a poop emergency. You don't want to go to the ER because you're super, super constipated. So taking a stool softener like Colace can really help during this process. So that's one of the things I tell my patients to get beforehand so you're not running to the pharmacy, you know, dealing with like, what should I get? You have it at home already. And it's something that can help with pregnancy and postpartum as well. The two other things on this list are electrolyte rich drinks. I just call it salty water. So for example, coconut water. What else? G0, we got G2, we have Propel, we have Powerade. Powerade is gluten-free. So there's so many drinks that you can get so that you can stay and keep hydrated. Okay, and then if you haven't heard of my Egg Whisper pants, they're actually coming soon. I'm super excited. So this allows for a more comfortable fertility clinic visit so you're not uh, feeling so um, exposed as you're waiting for the doctor to come in, right? I mean, you take your pants off. What do all fertility patients do? You know, sleeves up, arms out, pants down. Um, I want the experience to be as comfortable as possible for my patients. So I hope that these pants are something that maybe you'll find helpful too. So next, we got protein bars and shakes. So my favorite brand is Orgain. You can get it at Costco now. So they're um, basically, the way they sound, organic protein bars, and then you can get their ready-made shakes. I don't really have much patient, patience for powder um, to, to mix anything. So they're ready-made, easy to drink, super tasty, super healthy. And you know when you're feeling really bloated and having a hard time eating, sometimes these can be a quick meal replacement or a snack, and you don't have to really worry about what's in there because it is healthy. And then like I said before, having Tylenol and Motrin at home for cramps, for headaches. And again, always talk to your doctor about what you're taking and when so that they make sure that they know what's going on. 
Electrolyte powders are also another alternative to the electrolyte rich drinks. You can get, for example, Liquid IV. There's another brand called um, Drip Drop. I think they have that at Walgreens, Liquid IV. They also have that at Costco right now. So you can just basically open up the powder pack, put it in your water, and it makes your water more hydrating. So that's something else that you can do. If you're watching this show and you're going through IVF from now, and I have not mentioned something on my checklist that you think has been really helpful for you, please add it. Add it in the comments here, add it on YouTube, add it on Facebook. Um, tweet it as a comment as you're watching the show because I'd love to hear from you and make this the most comprehen comprehensive IVF checklist out there that can last forever. I'm not going to be here forever, people, but I want these recommendations to outlast me and benefit patients for hundreds of years to come. Okay, maybe that's a little extreme, hundreds of years. Okay, here we go. Anti-itch cream. You're like, what? Why should I get that? Well, let me tell you, it is not unusual to get a reaction to some of the shots. Sometimes you can get a red raised reaction, for example, when you add the antagonist or when you take the trigger shot. And when a patient messages me, hey, I have this, I simply say, oh, get out your anti-itch cream, just put it on there, it should go away pretty quickly. Same thing with, for example, the progesterone shot. It is not unusual to get a red raised area. Sometimes it can be really itchy. So you can use anti-itch cream on there. You can take Benadryl at night, Claritin during the day. Again, talk to your daughter first, doctor first before you do these things. These are the recommendations that I just make to my patients and I want you to learn from them too. The other thing is a massage stick. Yeah, no, not a vibrator, but a massage stick. So a massage stick is something like a hand roller massage uh, massager that you can use, for example, over the spot where you're doing your progesterone shot. So this is something that I talk to my patients about. And if you think that it would be helpful for you too, go ahead and find one. Okay, so now self-care super, super important. We're all stressed. Everyone's anxious. We're dealing with so many things. We're working hard. We're trying to go through IVF. We're trying to maintain our relationships. We're trying to maintain our relationship with our family, our work, and our partners if there is one. So this is something that I tell my patients. We are much better together than alone. It is so important to find friends who are going to be there for you during this entire process and not just one friend. I'm not just talking about the one friend online in a chat group, on a Facebook group. I'm talking about someone who you can talk to, someone you can text with, someone who will be there at appointments with you if you need them. Those are all the people that I want in your life. You can find mentorship programs, for example, through Shine Fertility, through Fruitful Fertility. These are programs that will allow you to match up with a with another person who's gone through the same thing that you've gone through. You can even ask your doctor, and I have patients that I've matched up together. I have patients who've gone through something similar to another patient, and I say, you know what? These patients have actually volunteered to be mentors for my other patients, and I put them together, and it's been a really, 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 really great experience for everybody. So I highly recommend that you don't go through this alone. You find people to, to, to be there for you, because um, I promise you, fertility, uh, Warriors are people who will do anything to help anyone through the same journey that they went through so that they don't feel alone the way a lot of the times they felt, okay? So here are some other things that I ask people to do. You know, do something maybe that's a little outside your comfort zone. I mean, if, you, if you're not a trail hiker or a walker, you know, find a nice park or somewhere in your area to take a nice nature walk. It just, it just changes your mood, just breathing in nice fresh air. Go to a local beach, a, no, a local lake, go to a mountaintop. You know, do something different and pick out one place per week to do it at with a friend, with your partner, with somebody alone, with a headset. Maybe I should go right now. I'll see you guys later. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyways, that sounds very relaxing to me at this moment. Pick out also one thing each week. And it doesn't have to be each week. It could be once every two weeks or it can be two times in one week, depending on what your mood is. But try and dedicate maybe a massage session, a pedicure, something to pamper you so that you feel well supported in everything um, and you feel as relaxed as possible and you feel you know, focused and centered as you're going through IVF. And the other thing that I ask patients to do is talk about who you're gonna share your journey with and when, especially if a partner. You don't necessarily want people to bring things up to you at the wrong time that you didn't know that you know, maybe your partner told them and it wasn't something that you were ready to share with people. So those are really good conversations to have with your partner. To go through on your checklist, you can write these things down 
or to obviously talk with a therapist about. So I want you to do that before you go through your IVF cycle, not during and, and you're not sure about what you were gonna do or, or afterwards and now you have people calling about your pregnancy test and you find that really irritating and upsetting or annoying and you didn't really wanna share it with them at that time. So people remember, if you tell people you're going through IVF, I promise you they're gonna care about you and they're gonna to wanna to help and support you, but they're also gonna to wanna to be nosy and uh, tell them to watch my fertility support video as well, how to be a supportive friend for someone who's going through fertility. It has a ton of really helpful tips. Okay, now we're preparing for transfer and here's your checklist for transfer. Ask these questions of your doctor, of yourself. Are you going through a fresh or frozen transfer? Are you gonna do genetic testing? Yes or no, why or why not? If you don't know what these things are, it is so important to know what these things are and the difference between them before you go through your cycle. So a fresh transfer is basically transferring about five days after the egg retrieval. That's typically what I do. I transfer embryos that reach the stage called blastocyst stage. They have hundreds of cells, and these are the embryos that are the most viable and give the patients the highest chance for pregnancy. I also talk to my patients about genetic testing so they can find out which embryo has a normal set of chromosomes before transferring. It seems that that might give patients a higher chance of pregnancy and a lower risk of miscarriage and you can also preserve your fertility and find out which embryos to use next time for your next pregnancy. Hopefully that means another pregnancy and not another transfer if the first transfer didn't work. And then the other question is how will you prepare for your transfer? So you have to meet with someone, you have to talk to them and have them walk you through what preparation means based on what they know about you and what are the steps that you're gonna take. Have you done a mock transfer? Are you gonna do implantation, implantation testing? Have you done a saline sonogram to look to see if you have, for example, a uterine polyp or some of the things that I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. So preparation is so important. And if you're considering a fresh transfer, then I want you to know these things before the embryos come in. I see patients from all over the world. They send me their reports and I do video calls, for example, even before, before uh, they've, excuse me, I do video consults with them. And what I ask them at the time of the consult, I say, what was your embryo quality at the time of your transfer? And I'm surprised that still, and hopefully this is gonna happen less and less, People say to me, I, I, I wasn't told, and, or I don't know. I didn't even know that that was a question I could ask. I didn't even know that there was a grade. So embryos are like diamonds. They, they have scores, and that score is related to implantation potential. And knowing what the scores are it just guides me, and it tells me more about what the story is, and it tells me what I would do differently, and whether we should do genetic testing, and, and how many more cycles it might take for us to be successful. So what is your embryo quality at the time of your transfer? Super important. How many embryos should I transfer to give me the highest chance of a healthy pregnancy. A lot of times it means one, but in patients who are over a certain age, it means two, three, even four. So that's what I want you to talk to your doctor about before you transfer, even on that transfer day. And the other thing is if you don't already have kids at home and you're doing a fresh transfer, if you don't have embryos to freeze, depending on your story, you may wanna to talk to your doctor about banking embryos and not transferring because you might want to do another cycle for baby number two. So talking about those things before your transfer is key to know that um, you have all the answers uh, before you go ahead and make that decision to transfer. Other things to, to, for preparation purposes, along the lines of doing that saline sano, ask the question, do I have a hydrocelpinx? Should I worry about an ectopic pregnancy with my IVF cycle? Should I be, uh, do a hysteroscopy for a polyp first? Do I have endometriosis that needs to be transfer, uh, treated before a transfer? So, you know, just going through that little checklist there will make sure that you don't need to do anything additional before you move forward with your IVF cycle. And then you just let it go. You've done all the homework. You've done everything you possibly can. And then you just say, I am letting it go. And I wish I could sing the song because I'm not a soprano. I'm very much a second alto, sometimes a tenor. <laughs> so I'm not going to close tonight's show with singing Let It Go from the, from, from the movie Frozen. But maybe, maybe next time I'll do that. So I hope, I know I was talking really fast. I hope you guys enjoyed this show. You know, I love talking about fertility. I love helping anyone out there who I could possibly help. And I'd love to hear from you guys. So please, please, please post a comment. Tell me what your favorite thing is from the show or something that you've done that I didn't talk about that might help others. And I hope you'll join me next week. Thank you guys. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Good night. Bye-bye. 
Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadeh, and you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 